My name is Nico Blau. I'm the president and CEO of Boti Global LTD. Boti stands for Big on Toy Innovation and was founded in uh, the second half of 2012 as a joint venture between uh, GHL and uh, our holding BHBB. Together with uh, Mr. Stefan Volke, I am actually uh, responsible for running this operation. And our primary goal is to develop and produce products uh, for kids around the world. Our Hong Kong operation is primarily focused on developing innovative kids' products and we focus primarily on a few uh, categories. It's arts and crafts, construction, novelty and activity products. Our Hong Kong team is responsible for uh, developing, producing but also exporting our products to customers around the world. Besides having our Boti Global operation, we also have a European operation based in Apeldoorn, the Netherlands. From here we run our domestic business and uh, domestic business means we are actually distributing and promoting products to customers in the Benelux, the German speaking markets and in France. Our staff here is uh, well experienced, specialized in servicing our retail customers in the territories of the Benelux, Germany and France. We supply directly customers like Toys R Us, Müller, Rofu, Rossmann, Auchan, the Blocker Group, Dreamland, Colorado, Carrefour, but also to wholesalers that help us uh, bring products into what we call the mom and pop shops around these territories. Our job is to make sure that the products are delivered in time and at the right price and at the right moment and that we support them with most of our products through uh, you know, significant marketing campaigns. Besides, of course, uh, promoting and uh, supplying our own developed goods, we also have a function of a third party supplier, meaning we work for companies that lack proper distribution in these territories, such as Knex, as you can see here in the background. Other companies that we work with are Moose from Australia, uh, Craze Art, uh, The Bridge, and uh, Character Options. We're also looking towards uh, those niches. Uh, we have a couple of uh, creative collectible products, uh, but also some novelty toy items. So we're always looking for uh, an innovative edge uh, to either an existing concept or something that we feel hasn't really been done before. And but we've got uh, great ambitions and we've got some very uh, good ideas. Um, and I think in that sense as well, we're a team that work, works very well together on the, um, the conceptual side and myself on development, marketing, and then Nico obviously on, on sales and broader commercial side. We offer a mix that can really uh, differentiate in products and, uh, uh, and things that consumers will also ultimately want. Part of our marketing is not only doing TV, uh, as that's still a popular marketing tool, but today we're also very focused on what we call grassroots marketing. That means, uh, in other terms, face-to-face -face marketing, where we're trying to meet the end consumer and uh, get the product in their hands so they can experience what it is to have a Boti product and play with it. The consumer fair here is to show our products to the people, especially products that are not out yet in the markets. We want to see what the reaction is for the consumers, explain it to them, get them excited, give them a sneak preview for things that they can't have yet in the stores, and also just to take in again and see what it is that's so great about our products and what, what excites them and what makes them enthusiastic. And it's, uh, it's really been a great response so far, so we're really happy with that. Besides that, we're very active on the online uh, environment, both in sales but also in using marketing tools, where we're trying to reach not only the, uh, the end consumer but also what we call the enabler uh, uh, and the parents and the final decision makers, which are normally the parents. Decision makers uh, in, our con in our customer base is not only the kid, but of course also the parents. So besides trying to reach the children, we also need to make their parents aware of what our products are about, that they're safe, that they're fun to play with, and to a certain extent even uh, provide a social educational experience. That's how we see our products. We attend and uh, present products at a number of shows uh, around the world. Uh, to name a few, uh, we have the Hong Kong Toy Fairs, which take place in January and October of each year. There's a London Toy Fair that takes place, let's say, in the second half of uh, January. 
followed by the Nuremberg Toy Fair uh, that normally takes place beginning of February and then we have the New York Toy Fair that takes place also in February. So there's a lot of toy fairs where we meet uh, people, customers, suppliers, inventors around the globe. Even in today's world where you know we can reach each other and communicate so easily on the, uh, in, in the online environment, face-to-face uh, -face is still the most crucial tool in getting business uh, accomplished. Besides these few shows I've just mentioned, we have a few additional shows. We have the uh, MIP TV uh, shows that we go to in Cannes. Why are we there? That's where we meet the broadcasters and a lot of the licensing agents. And that's also where we find trends in terms of uh, product that re or licenses that relate to animated shows. And we've been going to these shows for I think already 14, 15 years. And we build a whole network in the animation and uh, media business things to us going to these shows and we're only one of the very few toy companies that actually attend that type of show. So I think in, in that sense we have the uh, some some foresight and we do not a, a, enough of business intelligence and research in the market to, to really um, get a good feel of, of what's going to be hot in the next couple of years and also in terms of um, concepts that we've worked on. I mean, we've been very successful with identifying a concept, developing it to a higher stage, even when, for instance, the concept in the, the early stages was turned down by some of the biggest toy companies in the world. And then ultimately, we still saw potential there, developed it together with the inventor, and uh, ultimately uh, were able to sell it on for a much higher value than, um, than the concept was originally um, put out uh, to the market. So sometimes I think we can add value or we offer a different perspective or, or present thing, concepts in the right light as well that make people think about potential of, uh, of certain products. And those are have often been the, the kind of things that have made a difference for us in the past and something that we want to do again in the future. So Innovation, there, there's different forms of innovation, but at the end, uh, the goal is always that you want to surprise uh, your customer base and bring something new. It's not easy to be uh, innovative. But there's different tools that allow us to be innovative. So there can be very simple uh, adjustments, uh, attachments to already existing product, till actually sourcing from the inventors world. Uh, we have a, a very big network of inventors that we source from. Uh, these are toy inventors or online inventors that we find in Japan, Korea, but also here in Holland or England or even in Latin America or the United States. So even though you can have an innovation or an R&D development group internally, the reality is it's all about out-of-the-box thinking. And out-of-the-box thinking normally happens out-of-the-box and not necessarily internally. 